Hello guys, welcome to another edition of 5 Minute Fridays and in this episode we're going to be looking at grid template areas. Alright guys, you can see in the browser here that we've created a quite cool looking layout. So we've got a header up here which spans across all four columns, as you can see in grid template columns. And then the main spans across three, and then we've got a side and a section, and it's on both the second and third row. And then in the fourth row, we have our footer. And the way we've created this layout is using grid column and grid row. But using these properties and this method can confuse people. And there's actually an alternative method to creating this exact same layout, and that's using grid template areas. And in my opinion, this is one of the coolest properties of the CSS grid. So what we're going to do now is demonstrate how we can use grid template areas. So I'm going to go in here in each of the semantic tags and just comment out grid column and grid row. Now this may look confusing at first, but once I show you how it works in full, you're going to understand exactly what I mean and how we use grid template areas. So the first property we need to use, and it goes inside the grid container, is grid template areas. So we write in here grid template areas. And the first row we need to create is the header. Now the way we create a row is we use single quote marks. And then inside here we can either put a letter or a word. In this case, I'm going to use H. So H stands for header. So you can quite literally write the whole word header out, but I'm just going to use H because it's a bit shorter. Now this H represents one column. So the header in our example spanned across all four columns. So we need three more H's. And nothing happens at the moment because we haven't initiated the second property, but now we've visually created the header. So you see here, it's got four H's. So one column, two column, three column, four column. And then this line here represents our row. So now we need to create our second row, which contained our main and our side. So again, I'm just going to be using letters. You can use words, but I'm going to be using M for main in this case. And it's spanned across three columns, so we need two more. And then we have one aside. And then we go into the third row, which again was a main. So it's important to put quote, single quote marks here, otherwise this won't work. We've got another main, so we need to do three. And then an S for section. And then the foot is the exact same as the header, so we just put four Fs. And now we've visually created the exact same layout in our grid template areas. So each letter here represents a column, and then each new line represents a row. But of course, it doesn't look the same at the moment. That's because we haven't initiated the second property, and that's grid area. And we need to put grid area in each of the semantic tags. So we go inside here, and we say grid area. And then we write the value or the letter that we use, or sometimes the word, depending on your preferences. So in this case, it's a H for header. So we put H. And you can see now that our header spans across four columns in the first row, just how we visually created it here. And now we do the same for main, so grid, area, and we write M. And you can see now that our main spans across three columns in two rows, just like we visually created it here. And then we'll do the same for a side, so grid, area, and then A for a side. And I'm just going to copy this, but for S. And the foot is the exact same as the header, so just grid, area, and then F. And there you go, we've created the exact same layout now using grid template areas. It's also important to understand, guys, that grid areas only work in squares or rectangles. We can't really have an odd shape, like an L or a triangle. So let's just say if we put a, a, H, a H in here, which is going to represent a header. You can see now the whole layout gets completely destroyed, So because it's created a sort of L shape with the headers. But that's essentially how grid template areas works, guys. We've visually created the layout inside the grid template areas, and each letter in here represents a new column, and each new line represents a row. And now we've created the exact same layout as if we were going to use grid lines with grid column and grid row. But that'll be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please hit the like button, and please consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next 5 Minute Fridays.